All right, so when you're solving up, whoops, a system like this of a bunch of linear inequalities and you're trying to maximize a certain amount, usually that P stands for profit. This is usually used with money. So first thing we need to do in red is I need to go graph this line. And I'm only going to do one, but I'm going to do it incredibly slow. There's two ways to graph a line. One of the ways is just to find two points on it and connect them. And the zeros on this one are so easy that that's how I would choose to do this one. But some of you guys, and I know you in particular, Parker, you like to solve it for Y, and I just want to show you how it doesn't matter. So stick with what you like. Mason, if you're like, yeah, I can see why those would work. Zero plus five is five. Five plus zero is five. That, those are good points, right? But I know, Parker, because I worked with you on the first part of this chapter, even when it was like this, you liked to move that x over by going negative x plus 5 over on the right. So stick with, with whichever one works better for you. This way always works. This way is nice when it's so easy to find them. So worst case scenario, if I had to pick one, this one is always good, solving for y. All right, so let's go do it the first way. One way would to be just go to 0, 5. Go to five, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and connect them. Wait, one, two, three, yep. Now, Parker, if he did his in slope intercept, would put his pencil right here, and the slope is negative one, so he'd go down one, over one, down one, over one, down one, over one, down one, over one. But do you see when you connect them, Betsy, it's the same thing. So it doesn't matter for that one. Now I'm going to go back and take a look at that sign. I'm not going to shade quite yet, but I would do this. Because it's less than, I need to keep my eyes under that line right now. Are we good with that? Then I'm going to go in with my black one and graph this one. Now this one is almost solved for Y, so I definitely stick with this method. What's the only thing I need to do to this black one? Divide by 2. Divide by 2, and that's exactly what I do. Okay. So I would say y less than or equal to negative x over 2 plus 8 over 2. We're dividing everything through by a 2. Does that make sense, Betsy? Because we like it solved for y. I wouldn't have found the zeros on this one. It would have been a kind of it's not so easy as this one was. Keep in mind when you don't see a number in front of it, there's a 1. So for this one, I'll go to 4 on the y-axis, because this guy right here is my y-intercept, so I go to 4. And you guys had a bunch of delta math on this, so you should be good at going to the y-intercept. What will a slope of negative 1 half have me do with my pen? Slope of negative 1 half, what am I going to do? Go ahead, you can tell me. If the slope is negative 1 half, which it is, what will I do with my pen? Go ahead and tell me, Mason. The slope's negative 1 over 2. What do I do with my pen right here? Down, down 1 two. over 2. Down 1 over 2. Down, <clears throat> down 1 over 2. Down 1 over 2. And I'm going to connect it. And if I do it neat enough, it's helpful. You don't have to do a whole lot of work. Now I'm going to go back up there and see what that sign was. It was less than, so I'm also going to stay below that line. So I have to be under the red and under the black. These just mean keep everything positive, which they've only given you the positive part of the graph anyway, but that's what those just mean stay like in the first quadrant, but that's the only quadrant they gave for graph paper on that one anyway, so it doesn't affect it. So you need to go shade in where you're under both the red line and the black line, which would be here, and then you'd cut this way. This is called the reason of feasible solutions. Every point in here meets all those constraints, but the ones that make it either the biggest or the smallest have to be at the corners of the polygon that it makes. So either this blue dot, this one, this one, or this one. So you always grab all the corners, Betsy. All right, so I'm gonna grab the top corners at zero, four. The origin is at 0, 0. The right-hand corner was at 5, 0. And because I was really neat with my graph, I can see where this one is. 
You see how it's two to the right and three up? So, Parker, these are all my possible answers. One of them is correct. So you have to go back up to that constraint that said P equals. Can you tell me what it equaled? P equals X plus three Y. Just X? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I need to take the X coordinate and add three of the Ys to it and see which one gives me the biggest number. So for this one, I would do 0 plus 3 <coughs> times 4. So this one's going to spit out a 12. And usually that P stands for profit. So let's say that one will give me a profit of $12. Or let's say $12 million. I won. Won. <laughs> right? Then on this one, I do 0 plus 3 times 0. That one definitely is not giving me anything. The next one, when I do x plus 3y, I do 5 plus 3 times 0, which is just 5. And the last one is what? The last one will be x2 plus 3 times the y. So 2 plus 9, 11. So the answer to this one, make sure you answer it. This would be it. And if you were make, making shoes and shirts that met that constraints of blah, 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 and X was shoes and Y was shirts, you wouldn't make any shoes and you make four shirts because it's giving you the most profit once it goes to the word problems. The process for the word problems is the same. The only thing is, is you won't need to graph it. You'll just have to set it up. So we'll do one more and be done for the day um, with this. And I'll go see if you guys need to make up some homework. So there's always two things on the table. You should always label one of them X and one of them Y. And they'll give you the structure of the table. So go ahead, you guys, and put an X above the corn muffins and a Y above the brown muffins. It says that it takes four cups of milk for the corn muffins. So I'm going to go to corn muffins and go four. And three cups of wheat flour. So three cups of wheat flour. Next one, it says it takes two cups of milk for the brown muffins and three cups. Is that what it said? Three cups? So both of them take three cups. Next up, they have 16 cups of milk. So I go over here and go 16. 15 cups of flour. 15. So first thing you just do is fill in your table left to right. And for our profit, we make $3 for every tray of corn. And we make 2 for every brain. Okay? So, they're going to, you will be told to fill in the chart, list the constraints. This is what you list. You go across and you go like this. 4x plus 2y is all my milk. Right? Milk for corn, milk for bran, but I only have 16 cups of milk at my disposal. So you'll say I have to be under 16. You read it across and you stay under this for these types. Okay? That's all you have. I only have 15 um, cups of wheat flour. Well, corn muffins take three cups, bran muffins take two cups. And I only have 15 to use. I don't have to use all of it, but I certainly can't use any more because that's all I have. Does this make sense, Betsy? You write it and you go straight across. One call, whatever it is they have you do. X, Y, fill it in. This plus this, boom. All right? Now, the other thing that's missing are two other constraints that don't come from your table. And then it goes two on the bottom. Let's say you can't make negative trays of corn muffins or negative trays of bran muffins. So don't forget, Parker, on your test, make sure you throw those on there. This just says, I, who's going to make any profit selling negative 10 trays of bran muffins? It doesn't make any sense, right? They don't come off your table, though. You have to remember to do it. So those are the constraints. Okay? Now, it says write the objective function. That comes from your profit. That's the thing we want to make the most. So my objective function is three of the corn muffins, three dollars for every tray is what I'll make, plus two dollars for every tray of bran. Do you think I want to maximize that or minimize it? Yeah, it's a profit, right? So we can write P equals for profit or 
whatever money equals m equals i think do they use p though pretty much and then we want to maximize our profit if we wanted to use the least amount of material in making a house then we would be minimizing or something but usually it's money and usually you're trying to get the most out of it did that help with the word problems mm -hmm. you just set it up and you do for x to y less than or equal three x three y less than or equal the only thing that's going to be different and then don't forget the sky part. right it's easy to forget because you it's not off the table. <clears throat> All right, and you won't have to graph your word problem. This problem done now? Yes. Good. Yeah, well, on the worksheet, you had to go to Desmos and actually type them in. Yeah, we have to do that. And make it. So um, we'll go to your worksheet and do that. But I think on your test, they don't have you do that because you don't have, you can't have your computer out. I'll have to check on that, though. Let's go do it just in case. Or do you not need help on the Desmos? Just have it. Yeah, let's stop. And let's, with you guys, take out maybe this the worksheet on this. Did she give a worksheet for this? Yeah, for you yeah. two? And Betsy, you probably had. Just a second. Bookworm.